We now dedicate our production to the Black Lives Matter movement. We ask you to take a moment of silence for all Black lives unjustly taken away, silenced, diminished, and excluded. How fares my lord? Speak, Beaufort, to thy sovereign. If thou beest death, I'll give thee England's treasure, enough to purchase such another island, so thou wilt let me live and feel no pain. Ah, oh, what a sign it is of evil life, where death's approach is seen so terrible. Beaufort, it is thy sovereign speaks to thee. Bring me into my trial when you will. Died he not in his bed, where should he die? Can I make men live where they will, or no? Oh, torture me no more, I will confess. Alive again? Then show me where he is. I'll give a thousand pound to look upon him. He hath no eyes. The dust hath blinded them. O oh, thou eternal mover of the heavens! Look with a gentle eye upon this wretch. Oh, beat away the busy meddling fiend that lays strong siege unto this wretch's soul, and from his bosom purge this black despair. See how the pangs of death do make him grin. Disturb him not, let him pass peaceably. Peace to his soul, if God's good pleasure be. Lord Cardinal, if thou thinkst on heaven's bliss, hold up thy hand, make signal of thy hope. He dies and makes no sign. Oh, God, forgive him. So bad a death argues a monstrous life. Forbear to judge, for we are sinners all. Close up his eyes and draw the curtain close. And let us all to meditation. Come, sirs, bring forth the soldiers of our prize. Here shall they make their ransom on the sand, or with their blood stain this discolored shore. I lost mine eye in laying the prize aboard, and therefore to revenge it shalt thou die, and so should these if I might have my will. Be not so rash. Take ransom. Let them live. Look on my George. I am a gentleman. Write me at what thou wilt, thou shalt be paid. And so am I. My name is Walter Whitmore. Stay, Whitmore, for thy prisoner is a prince, the Duke of Suffolk, Willem de Pole. The honorable blood of Lancaster may not be shed by such a jaded groom. Thy lips that kissed the queen shall sweep the ground. 
And now that smiledest at good Duke Humphrey's death, against the senseless winds shall grin in vain, who in contempt shall hiss at thee again. The commons here in Kent are up in arms, and to conclude, reproach and beggary is crept into the palace of our king, and all by thee. Oh, that I were a god to shoot forth thunder upon these paltry, servile, abject drudges. It is impossible that I should die by such a lowly vassal as thyself. Thy words move rage and not remorse in me. I go of message from the queen to France. I charge thee waft me safely across the channel. Come, Suffolk. I must waft thee to thy death. Come, Whitmore, that this death may never be forgot. Barbarous and bloody spectacle. His body will I bear unto the king. If he revenge it not, yet will his friends. So will the queen that living held him dear. Oft have I heard that grief softens the mind, and makes it fearful and degenerate. Think therefore on revenge, and cease to weep. But who can cease to weep and look on this? Here may his head lie on my throbbing breast. But where's the body that I should embrace? Ugh! Oh, barbarous villains! Hath this lovely face ruled like a wandering planet over me? And could it not enforce them to relent that were unworthy to behold the same? How now, madam? Still lamenting and mourning for Suffolk's death? I fear me, love, if that I had been dead, thou wouldst not have mourned so much for me. No, my love, I should not mourn, but die for thee. How now? What news? Why comest thou in such haste? Please it your grace to be advertised. The Duke of York is newly come from Ireland, and with a puissant and a mighty power is marching hitherward in proud array. I pray thee, Exeter, go and meet him, and ask him what's the reason of these arms. And Somerset will commit thee to the tower, until his army be dismissed from him. My lord, I'll yield myself to prison willingly, <laughs> or unto death, to do my country good. In any case, be not too rough in terms, for he is fierce and cannot brook hard language. I will, my lord, and doubt not so to deal, as all things shall redound unto your good. Come, wife, let's in, and learn to govern better, for yet may England curse my wretched reign. From Ireland thus comes York to claim his right and pluck the crown from feeble Henry's head. Ring bells aloud, burn bonfires clear and bright to entertain great England's lawful king. Whom have we here? Exeter, to disturb me? The king hath sent him sure, I must assemble. York, if thou meanest well, I greet thee well. Henry of Exeter, I accept thy greeting. Art thou a messenger or come of pleasure? A messenger from Henry, our dread liege, to know the reason of these arms and peace. Or why thou, being a subject as I am, should raise so great a power without his leave? Or dare to bring thy force so near the court? Scarce can I speak, my color is so great. I am far better born than is this king, more like a king, more kingly in my thoughts. 
but I must make fair weather yet a while, till Henry be more weak and I more strong. Exeter, I prithee pardon me, that I have given no answer all this while. My mind was troubled with deep melancholy. The cause why I have brought this army hither is to remove proud Somerset from the king, seditious to his grace and to the state. That is too much presumption on thy part, but if thy arms be to no other end, the king hath yielded unto thy demand. The Duke of Somerset is in the tower. Upon thine honor is he prisoner? Upon mine honor he is prisoner. Then, Exeter, I do dismiss my powers. Soldiers, I thank you all. Disperse yourselves. Meet me tomorrow in St. George's Field. You shall have pay and everything you wish. And let my sovereign, virtuous Henry, command my eldest son, nay, all my sons, as pledges of my fealty and love. I'll send them all as willing as I live. Lands, goods, horse, armor, anything I have is his to use, so Somerset may die. York, I commend this kind submission. We twain will go into his highness' tent. Exeter, doth York intend no harm to us, that thus he marcheth with thee arm in arm? In all submission and humility, York doth present himself unto your highness. Then what intends these forces thou dost bring? To heave the traitor Somerset from hence. See, Exeter, Somerset comes with the queen. Go bid her hide him quickly from the duke. For a thousand Yorks he shall not hide his head but boldly stand and front him to his face. How now? Is Somerset at liberty? Then, York, unloose thy long imprisoned thoughts, and let thy tongue be equal with thy heart. Shall I endure the sight of Somerset? False king, why hast thou broken faith with me, knowing how hardly I can brook abuse? King, did I call thee? No, thou art not king, not fit to govern and rule multitudes, which darest not, no, nor canst not rule a traitor. That head of thine doth not become a crown. Thy hand is made to grasp a palmer's staff, and not to grace an awful princely scepter. Here is a hand to hold a scepter up, and with the same to act controlling laws. Give place! By heaven thou shalt rule no more o'er him, whom heaven created for thy ruler. O oh, monstrous traitor, I arrest thee, York of capital treason, against the king and crown. Obey, audacious traitor, kneel for grace. Wouldst have me kneel? First let me ask of thee, if they can brook, I bow a knee to man. Sirrah, call in my sons to be my bail. I know ere they will have me go toward, they'll pawn their swords of my enfranchisement. Call hither Clifford, bid him come amain, to say if that the bastard boys of York shall be the surety for their traitor father. O oh, blood-bespotted Neapolitan, outcast of Naples, England's bloody scourge, the sons of York, thy betters in their birth, shall be their father's bail, and bane to those that for my surety will refuse the boys. See where they come? I'll warrant they'll make it good. And here comes Clifford to deny their bail. Health and all happiness to my lord the king. I thank thee, Clifford. Say, what news with thee? This is my King York, I do not mistake. But thou mistakes me much to think I do. To bedlam with him is the man grown mad. Ay, Clifford, a bedlam and ambitious humor makes him oppose himself against his king. He is a traitor. Let him to the tower and chop away that facious pate of his. He is arrested but will not obey. His sons, he says, shall give their words for him. Will you not, sons? Ay, noble father, if our words will serve. And if words will not, then our weapons shall. 
Why, what a brood of traitors have we here! Look in a glass and call thy image so. I am thy king, and thou a false-hearted traitor. Come hither to the stake of my most brave bear, that with the very shaking of his chains he may astonish these fell-lurking curs. Bid my noble Earl of Warwick come to me. Is this thy bear? We'll bait thy bear to death if thou darest bring him to the baiting place. Why, Warwick? Hath thy knee forgot to bow? Uh, where is faith? Uh, where is loyalty? My lord, I have considered with myself the title of this most renowned duke, and in my conscience do repute his grace the rightful heir to England's royal seat. Be Duke of Lancaster. Let him be king. He is both king and Duke of Lancaster. Henry of Lancaster, resign the crown. What title hast thou traitor to the crown? Thy father was as thou art, Duke of York. Thy grandfather, Roger Mortimer, Earl of March. I am the son of Henry V, who made the Dauphin and the French to stoop, and seized upon their towns and provinces. Prove it, Henry, and thou shalt be king. Henry the Fourth, by conquest, got the crown. Twas by rebellion against his king. I know not what to say. My title's weak. Plantagenet, for all the claim thou layest, think not that Henry shall be so deposed. Deposed he shall be, in despite of all. Or I will fill the house with armed men, and over the chair of state where now he sits, write up his title with usurping blood. Thou monstrous injurer of heaven and earth. My lord of Warwick, hear but one word. Let me, for this my lifetime, reign as king. What are you made of? You'll nor fight nor fly. Confirm the crown to me and mine heirs, and thou shalt reign in quiet while thou livest. I am content. Richard Plantagenet, enjoy the kingdom after my decease, conditionally that here thou take an oath to cease this civil war, and whilst I live, to honor me as thy king and sovereign. Who can be patient in such extremes? Ah, oh, wretched man! Would I had died a maid, and never seen thee, never born thee son, seeing thou hast proved so unnatural a father. Stay gentle, Margaret, and hear me speak. Thou hast spoke too much already. Get thee gone. I shame to hear thee speak, ah, oh, timorous wretch. The soldiers should have tossed me on their pikes before I would have granted to that act. But thou preferrest thy life before thine honor. And seeing thou doest, I here divorce myself, both from thy table, Henry, and thy bed. The northern lords that would forswear thy colors will follow mine, when once they see them spread, and spread they shall be. To thy foul disgrace and utter ruin of the house of York. Call Exeter and bid him arm himself. Call Exeter and all the friends thou hast. Five men to twenty, though the odds be great. I doubt not, dear sons, of our victory. Many a battle have I won in France, when as the enemy hath been ten to one. Why should I not now have the like success? I am resolved for death and dignity. The first, I warrant thee, if dreams prove true. Fie, charity for shame. Speak not in spite, for you shall sup with Jesu Christ tonight. Foul stigmatic, that's more than thou canst tell. If not in heaven, you'll surely sup in hell. What seest thou in me, York? 
Why dost thou pause? With thy brave bearing should I be in love, but that thou art so fast mine enemy. Nor should thy prowess want praise and esteem, but that tis shown ignobly and in treason. So let it help me now against thy sword, as I in justice and true right express it. My soul and body on the action both. Thus war hath given thee peace, for thou art still. Peace with thy soul, heaven if it be thy will. Shame and confusion, all is on the route. Fear frames disorder, and disorder wounds where it should guard. O oh, war! Thou son of hell, throw in the frozen bosoms of our part hot coals of vengeance. Let no soldier fly. He that is truly dedicate to war hath no self-love. Oh, let the vile world end, and the premised flames of the last day knit earth and heaven together. Now let the general trumpet blow his blast, particularities and petty sounds to cease. Wast thou ordained, dear father, to lose thy youth in peace and to achieve the silver livery of advised age and in thy reverence and thy chair days thus to die in ruffian battle? Even at this sight, my heart is turned to stone. And while tis mine, it shall be stony. York, not our old men spares. Henceforth, I will not have to do with pity. In cruelty, I will seek out my fame. So lie thou there. Uh, for underneath an alehouse paltry sign, the castle in St. Albans, Somerset, hath made the wizard famous in his death. Sword, hold thy temper. Heart, be wrathful still. <laughs> Priests pray for enemies, but princes kill. Ah, wither, shall I fly to escape their hands? Now, is he dead already, or is it fear that makes him close his eyes? I'll open them. Ah, gentle Clifford, kill me with thy sword, and not with such a cruel, threatening look. In vain thou speak'st, poor boy. My father's blood hath stopped the passage where thy words should enter. They let my father's blood open it again. He is a man, and Clifford cope with him. Had I thy brethren here, their lives and thine were not revenge sufficient for me. No, if I digged up thy forefathers' graves and hung their rotten coffins up in chains, it could not slake mine ire, nor ease my heart. Therefore... Oh, let me pray before I take my death. To thee I pray, sweet Clifford, pity me. And when I give occasion of offense, then let me die. For now thou hast no cause. No cause. Your father slew my father. Therefore, die. 
Plantagenet, I come, Plantagenet. And this, thy Rutland's blood, cleaving to my blade, shall rest upon my weapon till thy blood, congealed with this, do make me wipe off both. The army of the queen hath got the field, and all my followers to the eager foe turn back and fly like ships before the wind or lambs pursued by hunger-starved wolves. My sons, God knows what hath bechanced them. Three times did Richard make a lane to me, and thrice cried, Courage, father, fight it out. And full as oft came Edward to my side, with purple falchion painted to the hilt in blood of those that had encountered him. And when the hardiest warriors did retire, Richard cried, A crown, or else a glorious tomb. Ah, hark, the fatal followers do pursue, and I am faint and cannot fly their fury. And were I strong, I would not shun their fury. The sands are numbered that make up my life. Here must I stay. And here my life must end. Come, bloody Clifford, rough Queen Margaret, I dare your quenchless fury to more rage. My ashes, as the phoenix, may bring forth a bird that will revenge upon you all, and in that hope I throw mine eyes to heaven, scorning what ear you can afflict me with. Why come you not? What, multitudes in fear? So, cowards fight when they can fly no further. O oh, Clifford, but bethink thee once again, and in thy thought o'errun my former time. And if thou canst for blushing view this face, and bite thy tongue that slanders him with cowardice, whose frown hath made thee faint and fly ere this. I will not bandy with thee, word for word. But buckler with thee blows, twice two for one. Hold, valiant Clifford. For a thousand causes I would prolong a while the traitor's life. Come, make him stand upon this molehill here. What? Was it you that would be England's king? Was it you that reveled in our parliament and made a preachment of your high descent? Where are your mess of sons to back you now? The wanton Edward and the lusty George. And where's that valiant crook-back prodigy Dicky, your boy, that with his grumbling voice was wont to cheer his dad in mutinies? Or with the rest? Where is your darling Rutland? Look, York. I stained this napkin with the blood that valiant Clifford, with his rapier's point, made issue from the bosom of the boy. And if thine eyes can water for his death, I give thee this to dry thy cheek withal. Alas, poor York, but that I hate thee deadly, I should lament thy miserable state. I pray thee, grieve, to make me marry, York. What? Hath thy fiery heart so parched thine entrails that not a tear can fall for Rutland's death? Why art thy patient, man? Thou shouldst be mad, and I, to make thee mad, do mock thee thus. Stamp, rave, and fret, that I may sing and dance, that wouldst be feed, I see, to make me sport. I, York cannot speak, unless he wear a crown. A crown for York. And lords, bow low to him. Hold you his hands. Whilst I do set it on, I marry, sir. 
Now looks he like a king. And how is it the great Plantagenet is crowned so soon and broke his solemn oath? As I bethink me, you should not be king till our King Henry had shook hands with death. Oh, is a fault too, too unpardonable. Off with the crown, and with the crown his head. And whilst we breathe, take time to do him dead. She wolf of France, but worse than wolves of France, whose tongue more poisonous than the adder's tooth, I would say, proud queen, to make thee blush, to tell thee whence thou camest, of whom derived were shame enough, to shame thee were thou not shameless. Thou wert as opposite to every good as the antipodes were unto us. O oh, tiger's heart wrapped in a woman's hide, how couldst thou drain the lifeblood of my child to bid the father wipe his eyes withal, and yet seem to bear a woman's face? Bidst thou me rage? Why now thou hast thy wish. Wouldst have me weep? Why now thou hast thy will. For raging winds blows up incessant showers, and when the rage allays, the rain begins. These tears are my sweet Rutland's obsequies, and every drop cries vengeance for his death against thee, fell Clifford, and thee, false French woman. See, ruthless queen, a hapless father's tears. This cloth thou dipst in blood of my sweet boy, and I with tears do wash the blood away. Keep thou the napkin, and go boast of this, and if thou tell'st the heavy story right, upon my soul the hearers will shed tears, yea, even my foes will shed fast-falling tears, and say, alas, it was a piteous deed. There, take the crown, and with the crown my curse. And in thy need, such comfort come to thee, as I now reap at thy too cruel hand. Hard-hearted Clifford, take me from this world, my soul to heaven, my blood upon your heads. Here's for my oath, here's for my father's death. And here's to right our gentle-hearted king. Open thy gate of mercy, gracious God. My soul flies through these wounds to seek out thee. Off with his head and set it on York gates so York may overlook the town of York.